am April. I am a singer songwriter and music teacher and I've already made a couple of videos on this exact topic but today I thought it would be really really fun to go through the entire process step by step and show you exactly how I write a song without any instruments or vocals. Before we get started, I just wanted to say a big thank you to every single person who's checked out my Skillshare class so far. If you haven't heard about my class yet, it is a beginner songwriting course that details every single little step in the entire songwriting process from beginning to end, including how to get started with the piano. So if that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and click the link in the description and you'll get a free month of Skillshare Premium. So we're gonna start by creating a four bar loop. All that that means is we're gonna be creating a super short, tiny piece of music, and then we're just going to expand it until we have a much bigger, more complex, more interesting piece of music. We're gonna start by using the Song Maker in Chrome Music Lab. And if you wanna follow along, there will be a link in the description. I think this platform is really fun because you honestly don't have to know anything about music to get started. We're gonna start by looking at all of these tiny little boxes. And really these boxes are just representative of the piano. So we're right now just looking at the white keys on the piano. So if you take a look at one of these boxes, you'll notice that vertically, we're just playing a major scale or we're playing all of the white notes on the piano one after the next, which is really great because you don't actually have to know about the piano. You can really just press all of the fun colored buttons and see what happens if you want to. Now that we know what's happening vertically, let's look horizontally. When we click and drag here, we're just creating sound over time. So you can kind of notice that when I drag out this big red thing, it just allows us to do a bunch of tiny little beats. Now we obviously don't want the same note to be happening over and over through the whole thing, but this at least gives you a sense of what the timing is gonna feel like. Okay, so now that you know the basics, we're gonna get started by creating chords. A chord is just more than one note being played at the same time. So we're gonna create these by stacking notes one on top of the next. As we stack these notes though, we're gonna be skipping one note in between. So it's gonna look like this. Pretty easy. We're just skipping one little white block in between every note. And then all we're gonna do is just drag this out until it fills this whole unshaded section. Next, we're just gonna find a different note to start on and do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna start on how about the yellow this time? And then it's just gonna be every other set of blocks here. And then again, we're gonna do the exact same thing until we've filled in an interesting chord progression. Okay, so now we have four chords that we can work with and they're happening over the course of four bars. Bars being represented by the white unshaded section, the second shaded section, the third one is unshaded, and then that fourth one is of course shaded. But you'll notice that this orange block is just a little bit higher than the rest of them. So all that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take this orange set of blocks and I'm just gonna move it whoop, down to the bottom. And that'll just make it sound a little bit more cohesive because all of these chords are a little bit closer together. So let's listen to our chord progression so far. I think that sounds really great so far, but I feel like it's missing some stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little drum beat and we're gonna do that with these little dots that fall at the bottom of the screen right about here. So I'm gonna start with a really super simple drum beat and it's gonna look like this. And that's it. We're just gonna repeat that over and over until we get to the very end of the screen. So now that we have our entire drum beat in here, let's listen to how it sounds. I already think that sounds way cooler than it did before, but we can also change that maybe to a drum kit rather than an electronic drum. And it might just change the sound and make it a little bit more like a cool rock song. Now you can 
can start messing around with the melody or the tune of your song. We're going to start by just choosing one note from each of these chords. So in this first chord, we've got a C major chord. We've got C, E, and G, which are just red, yellow, and that dark green color. And all we're going to do is we're just going to choose arbitrarily one of those notes. So I'm going to go with that yellow for the moment. For this next chord, I'm going to do the exact same thing. And then I'm going to do that for all of my chords. So how about I go for, how about this dark green? And then let's do light green. And I'm going to do maybe orange. So this is how this sounds. obviously going to be a little bit boring if we don't add anything else into it. So I'm just going to choose notes that I like the sound of. So this can be notes in the chord. This can be notes that are not in the chord. Really nothing is going to sound terrible here. And if it does, you can always go back and edit stuff. So I'm just going to randomly kind of choose some stuff here. That sounds okay so far. I'm probably going to make a couple of edits in here because I don't particularly like the sound of this little moment. I think I can also maybe change this guy maybe down to a yellow. Actually, I might add this over here. Let's see how that goes. Now that sounds much better to me. And obviously I can keep kind of tweaking if I decide that that's what I want to do. If you like what you've got, go ahead and leave it exactly as is. But if you want to go ahead and add more, you're totally free to do that. Just add some more colored blocks and see what you like the sound of. There are no wrong answers anywhere here. Just go ahead and create what sounds good to you. Now that we have a pretty cool sounding loop, we're going to take that and we're just going to put it into a DAW or a digital audio workstation. For this video, I'm going to be using soundtrap.com which is just a really user-friendly interface. And it's really great for collaboration if you ever decide to add a lyricist or add a vocalist later. This video isn't sponsored by them or anything. I just really like it and I use it with all my students. In order to put this song into my DAW, all I'm gonna do is go to this save button down the bottom. And when you do this, you can obviously copy the link and maybe save it somewhere that way you can access this same page. But instead of doing that right now, I'm just going to leave this tab open and I'm just going to click this download MIDI button. And then that comes up at the bottom of my screen. I'm going to go over to my DAW Soundtrap and I'm just going to click and drag that right into my project. And you can see this opened up two instruments here. We've got a Rhodes, which is kind of like a keyboard, but it'll sound a little bit more synthy. And then this clean black, which is a drum. Now you can see when I zoom in that some of these chords don't totally look right. So I'm gonna zoom in and you can see that a couple of these spots here just got kind of cut off. I'm not completely 100% sure why this happens, but if you happen to know, go ahead and put it in the comments below because I've never been able to figure it out. So now let's listen to what we have so far with our new instruments. I think that sounds great. So if you decide that you want to add more stuff, you can always double click on these and it'll bring you to some stuff like this. I can add more drum parts like a hi-hat, which is a type of cymbal, or I can just leave it as is. And for now, I'm just going to kind of leave it like that because I think it sounds pretty good. If you decide you want to maybe stretch any of these notes out or do things that are a little different, you can pull those and just click them and drag them. Cool. So now that we have that, let's start creating a bass line. The bass line is kind of the backbone of your song. So really all that it is, is it's going to be that that a bass guitar would be playing or that the left hand on a piano would be playing. We're going to start by going back to our thing that we created before. And again, you can save what you have currently and copy this link and put it somewhere else. And it'll make sure that nothing changes when you actually go back to that link. So I think that's a really useful thing to do. In the meantime, though, what I'm going to do is I'm going to totally get rid of my melody here because it's already in my DAW. So I don't really have to think about it so much. So what I can do is to make it 
as simple as possible. Find what's called the bass note in each of our chords. I'm gonna get rid of this too. But let's find that bass note in each of our chords. That's gonna be the bottom note in each chord, except when we get to this last chord, remember that this was originally our bass note and that we brought this one down. So I'm actually going to erase that one and it'll just sound like this. Which I think sounds pretty fine as it is. So again, I'm gonna hit save. I'm going to download that MIDI and I'm just going to drag it into a new track. And I can actually change the sound of that track by going to guitar and bass here. I'm going to choose a bass guitar. Let's listen to a couple of these. I don't have the premium one, so I'm just gonna go for these free ones here. Let's go with this one, that clean jazz kind of nice sounding. And so I'm gonna click, I'm gonna drag, and there it is inside of my DAW. Now to make it sound even bassier, what I'm gonna do is I am going to right click here and I'm gonna go down to change pitch and go to negative 12. That brings it down a full octave. So it's still gonna sound really great. It's just gonna be a lot lower, which is gonna make it sound more like a bass. Cool, so I think that sounds really nice so far. So you can keep your bass line as simple as this. It doesn't have to be anything more complicated or you can go ahead and do something that's just a little bit more complex. All I did here is that I skipped a note and then went backwards. So I created the entire chord here like this, and then I just deleted all of these middle ones, boop, 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 and then just alternated in a pattern like this. Easy peasy. So I think that sounds kind of cool. So I'm actually going to save that. That was originally going to be another baseline idea, but I can also just bring that in and create a totally different instrument. So maybe I'll do another guitar here. Um, and I'm gonna choose one of these pop guitars. Let's try that clean. Picking all the clean guitars today. <laughs> So that sounds pretty cool, but it's a little hard to hear. So for the moment, we're gonna mute everybody else just so you can hear that one on its own. Cool, I think that's still a little quiet. So I'm just gonna increase the volume on that one. And I'm maybe gonna pull some of these other ones back a bit so that that one doesn't get kind of drowned out. Cool, and I can even go in again and I can enlarge these so that they go on just a tad longer. And let's listen to how it sounds. And I think that sounds totally lovely. Once you have all of your instruments in place and you generally like the way everything sounds, you can go ahead and just click and drag in order for it to loop over and over. I like to stagger the start times of all of my instruments because I think it just makes for a more interesting listening experience. Once you have all of your instruments set and you generally like the sound of everything, go ahead and repeat that exact process for any new sections that you wanna to add to your song. If you like the way everything sounds and you don't want to add any vocals or anything like that, you can go ahead and just download it as an mp3 and you're done! Woohoo! If however you decide that you do want to add vocals or lyrics to your project, you can just go ahead and 
add a collaborator here, or you can check out this video right here to get started with lyric writing. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, be sure to leave a like, let me know in the comments, subscribe, ring the little bell, and also check out my Skillshare class.